Okay, so this is going to be an overview of how to make a 3D print, kind of start to finish. Uh, this first video is going to be is just a screen capture of what I'm doing. I'm using Slicer, Printer Face, and then printing with a beta, early beta printer bot. Uh, so this first one is just the uh, software here, so you can see what's going on. This is Slicer 0.8.4. I just uh, installed this one today, so I'm, it looks to be pretty much like the uh, last version. They've really improved it a lot from six months ago or so. Uh, they've got this new where you can drag your STL files in. Got all kinds of things here. We'll look at some of this a little bit. First, let me go through my uh, tabs so you can see what I've got, I'm using. Uh, under the advanced tab, I really don't have anything. I haven't done anything. I truly am not that advanced. Uh, for my G-code, these are what I have for G-code. These are my calibrations for my X, Y, and Z axis and my extruder. I also have a G28 command to home all, all the axes, the X, Y, and Z axis. I, I have end stops uh, before it starts. And when I end, I do a G92. Basically, that lifts it up 10 millimeters. And then a G28, which uh, homes the X axis. And then uh, M84 to turn off the motors. And that's, that's all I have as far as my own code. These calibrations are pretty much what printerbot.com has. I don't know that I've, I've tweaked them and then gone back. So I, I, I think these are pretty much their original ones. Printer and filament. You can see my numbers over here on the side. Uh, nothing fancy. I've played around with these a lot. These are not necessarily ideal, uh, but uh, th they work for what I've been printing lately. So I'm sticking with them until I get time to kind of play with them some more. Um, uh, printer perimeters at 30, basic infill at 60, travel speed at 100. Uh, that bridge number there is. Uh, I, I finally gotten my bridges working a little bit. They're not perfect, but they're getting better. And then uh, my first layer is at 50% of the normal print speed. I have a 0.5 uh, millimeter nozzle. I'm working on 150 by 150 millimeter bed. You'll notice that I have 60 by 60 for my print center. That's because my end stops are not in the ideal place because of my beta version of my printer. So I had to make some adjustments so that this actually puts it in the center of my bed. Uh, I'm using the RepRap Marlin Sprinter G-Code Flavor. Uh, uh, with calipers, my, fil my filament came in at 2.82. You'll notice I have no temperatures down here. I found that if I have temperatures, then Pronter Face is always trying to figure out when I'm at the proper temperature. If I don't put any in here, but then make sure I check my temperatures in Pronter Face right before I start print, uh, it starts immediately, and I've had a whole lot less problems since I've done that. So, you know, your, your mileage may vary, but that's what I'm doing now. I do have a fan. I had an old computer fan that I plugged in. I have a printer board for my uh, firmware. Uh, basically, it's just uh, always on after the first layer. So I disabled it for the first layer, and after that it's on full speed. And, and you'll see when you see the it printing, it's kind of hooked up sitting by the side. I don't have it attached to my printer yet at this point. Uh, print settings. Right now I'm doing, most of my prints have two perimeters, two solid layers on the bottom and on the top. Uh, 0.3 fill density, which is in this stuff here, is basically all the default numbers. This retraction information, I got this off of something online, um, and it does seem to work better. I don't get a whole lot of blobbing, and so uh, that's been good. 0.4 layer height. Uh, I do use one, just one loop, one skirt loop, which works really well, so that it makes sure things are coming out of my nozzle. And uh, I have done some things with support material. I'm not with anything I'm printing this time. And it does actually work. I've done some things and it has worked. So this is the, the main uh, page here. And you drag an object here. What I'm going to do is I have a, something I made on Inventor, my Happy Sad Coin X. I haven't uploaded it to Thingiverse yet. But it's an STL file, so if I, all you have to do is drag that here, automatically puts it in the middle and tells you that it's centered uh, according to the numbers I had in. All of these things, it's really cool because you can, um, in fact, you can scale it. In fact, I'm going to scale it to just so that I can see how, how well that goes to 80%. I haven't printed this particular thing at 80%, so it may uh, have some problems, but you can, um, you can, make multiples. I can tell them I want more. And once you have more, you can actually drag it around and tell it where you want it to go. Now, I don't want... I guess I can't get I can't get rid of just one, so I'll put that this one back here. 
But if I did, I had a somewhere, oh, max here. If I brought this in, for example. So I have two things. I do this a lot, and but I can decide how I want to do it. You can move this stuff around, which is really cool. And if you want to do it so that you have more time to allow things to cool, I'll put something that I don't care about here just so that I'm away from some narrow part to give it a little more time for cooling. So as long as whichever one's highlighted, I can highlight that and I can delete it. But you can uh, do all these things with your part, rotate it and scale it and all that. Once you've got all that, um, my configuration I've already showed you, so I can just export my G-code and I'm going to call that my happy sad coin and put it on my desktop and you can see that it is doing it down here at the bottom and sliced in 3.3 seconds. It is fast as the dickens. All right, so once I have that all done in Slicer, I can then open up my prompt interface. Looks like this. Uh, I'm not going to go through how to connect. It's always tricky. Mine connects through COM8. And so if I click connect, hopefully there it is. And yep, it's connected. I just clicked that to see that it was going up. The temperatures I'm using, again, they're not ideal. I had another printer that I ran at a much lower temperature. This one seems to require a higher temperature right now. So I've got it at 220. And my bed, I'm running at 100. I've got a uh, printer board bed. I've got a glass on top with uh, capped on tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that on because that takes a lot longer to heat up. My uh, extruder heats up in a matter of a couple of minutes. My bed takes five or ten. So I'm going to do that um, and bring in, load my file. And that will be down here. Happy Sad Coin, G code, open. And you can see that it's not centered, but it will be on my bed. Uh, Again, there's a lot of different things you can do up here. I, you know, if you need to go to Slicer, if you click on Settings and I click on this, it will uh, open up that Slicer that I was just looking at. If you want to see the actual code, if I click on Edit, it actually shows me all of my G code. And that's cool because there was a time where I used to have to do adjustments to temperatures and things in here. Uh, and so you can do that and then you can save it and so you can make uh, editing right there. These things down here, uh, when I check my temperature, I can see it is heating, but it's going to take a while. And uh, extrude, I usually leave this at 5 so I can test it. And uh, when I bring that in, it says I've got 12 layers and it will take 9 minutes to print. And usually it's a little faster than that when it gets done. So I've pretty much gone through all of that. I'm going to uh, stop this and then in my second video, I'll have a camera pointing at my printer and I'll go through printing this coin out for you. So if you want to look to part two, you'll be able to see that.